There was a time, back in the old days, of me being a console gamer, when Bethesda could do no wrong, even when their games didn't come to the Sony platform in the form of Morrowind and such, they stayed Xbox 360 exclusives or PC. I was out in the cold with my little PlayStation. Then Fallout 3 came and I loved it to death. I thought it was great. I thought how amazing a studio Bethesda was. Then Fallout New Vegas came out and I thought, oh my flipping God, this is so much better than Fallout 3 was. But there was one sort of niggling issue. The games were buggy as hell. I remember Fallout New Vegas, I would have the missing data texture file explanation point on the PlayStation console version of the game. At the time, I didn't know what the fuck it was. But now that I'm a PC gamer, I know exactly what it is, and it's surprising that this was ever an issue. But Fallout 3, all the fucking DLC, oh my god. I was really playing single frame digits, dude. Like, just, I had to chug through certain areas of the game because it would literally freeze and play at one to five frames per second. And it wasn't until I got out of the air area I was able to save, and it was Operation Anchorage. Then there was the Skyrim issue with Sony's PlayStation, where the DLC came, what, six months after it hit Xbox? And even then it was a buggy fucking mess. It was so badly bugged. Bethesda, when they finally put it out on the PlayStation, they are like, you know what? Here it is for five bucks. And that was that. And at the time, I was like, this is great. Only five dollars. Not realizing what a mess I was in for. But it's now 2018. I'm a PC gamer now. And I realized just how pathetic of a company Bethesda is when it comes to game making. I've said it once. I said it twice. I said it a thousand times. If Bethesda was a car company... They would have gone out of business by now. If Bethesda did anything but make buggy games, they would have been gone. So, if you recall, two weeks ago, Bethesda put out that lovely statement that Fallout 76 wouldn't be hitting Steam so it could provide its customers the best experience possible. <laughs> Are you serious? This was said by none other than Pete Hines, as we all know, the talking mouthpiece for Todd Howard. He's like Darth Vader to Todd Howard's Palpatine. Let's move on, because YouTube has been cracking down on my negativity as of late. I will read this again, even though I talked about it last week, where Pete Hines said Bethesda.net exclusivity allows us to have that one on one relationship with the customer. And quite honestly, you don't always have when you go through a third party where they might own the relationship. P. Hines later says it simplifies things a little, and we believe it's going to help us deal with some issues and challenges that we've seen in the past. And again, it's a new experience, blah, 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 blah. Now, the irony is he says this shit, and literally, as soon as the beta comes to PC, Bethesda has an amazing issue now, originally, it was believed that Bethesda sat there and said they were investigating the issue with Bethesda.net on their forums, which later crashed mysteriously when too many people were having their game files deleted. How convenient the forum would just go down when shit really hits the fan. Almost seems premeditated, if you ask me, because most people look at it and go, oh, there goes Bethesda, even their site is buggy. They're probably like, oh, God, this is going really bad. People are, there's more complaints than we can handle. Just unplug it, and we'll say that it crashed. Good idea. Unplugging forms now. Please go to Reddit and complain there. We're sure to look. Wink. So Bethesda said, we are actively investigating an issue causing PC players to re-download Fallout 76 beta. If you see a progress bar, please allow the download to complete. Thank you for your continued patience while we work to restore all issues, yada yada. Bethesda even went as far as putting on tweets urging people on the PC platform to not press play on the game launcher. Because in doing so, it will result in the launcher deleting your 50 gigabyte download of the beta. This was so ridiculous. I laughed because it's it's just typical Bethesda and went about my day. It didn't occur to me to like save screen caps of the stupidity. It then later came out that Surprisingly, there were a number of people who did not click the play button and their copy of Fallout 76 was still deleted. Oh! 
as also confirmed by Kotaku, where the Kotaku journalist Luke Plunkett also said that he was receiving many messages from readers who said that they were also affected by this bug and they didn't even click anything. They simply had the client open. Now, you might say to yourself, maybe it would have been smarter to close the client and you wouldn't have had this issue. Yes and no, because this is Bethesda and Bethesda is utterly a joke. If you go to PC Gamer, you'll find that one of their editors said that, and I quote, I foolishly restarted the launcher, at which point I was unable to log back into my account, receiving an error message and being told to check my username and password. Eventually I got in, but my game library is currently entirely blank. The forms at Bethesda site are showing a 504 message as well. That's not all. Call right now and you'll also receive a brand spanking new gameplay trailer for Rage 2. And what's that number to call? 1-800, I really hadn't thought this far ahead. Help me! Somebody help me! So no matter what you did, whether you turned it off, whether you left it on, something was going to get fucked. And it's your wallet. If this isn't sign enough, you know, if this isn't sign up, the one saving grace of Bethesda games was the modding community. That was it. Without modders, Bethesda has its pants down, running a New York marathon, tripping every five seconds and knocking its teeth out. And there's some idiot over there cheering them on. He's wearing the red ribbon for cancer. You're right, Bethesda is cancer. As you've heard me say many times before about Fallout 76 essentially being Fallout 4 online, if you ever needed more proof of my words, all you have to do is hear the most recent moronicism. Players report speed hacking exploit in Fallout 76 beta. Now, if you recall during Fallout 4 when it came out, some people, including myself, were living with this horrible bug where the damn game launched and was locked at 30 FPS. It didn't matter what your rig had, some of us, for some reason, were stuck at 30 FPS. So, we had to go in the any files, modify them. By making it unlimited, we all ran into a very interesting bug, where we realized that the game's frames were tied to the game's logic. Therefore, if you were running Fallout at 144 frames, you were playing the game as Sonic the fucking Hedgehog. You ran fast, you did everything fast, your character was on speed. It was ridiculous. So then you had to go back and get Rivia Tuner. You had to get Rivia Tuner and then lock your game's frame rate to 60 FPS to the Fallout EXE. That way you had the unlock frame rate without the game being so disgustingly fast that it made you want to vomit. It was so shit. You think Bethesda would do something about this, and you know what? They didn't. How come? Tell me why! Say it! Say it! The same exact thing that was in Fallout 4 is in Fallout Online. Uh, no! <laughs> Many players were finding out that if they did this, they reload, fired, and did everything faster than a normal player. And it's nothing short of shocking. Like, honestly, it, 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 I'm just, I can't believe they would even allow this. The game's going to be out in two weeks. There are even more ridiculous bugs. Like, if you look at the ground long enough while running, it'll temporarily boost your frame rate, giving you the edge on another player. Even if Fallout somehow locks the game's frames to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is, some people are going to have an edge over others. I don't even know how they're going to fix this. Especially in two weeks, considering it's Bethesda, it's not CD Projekt Red, it's not Rockstar Games, hell, it's not even EA and DICE, it's Bethesda. If there's an issue, it'll either A, stay, or B, they'll patch it and make it worse. What's surprising is this issue has persisted in the Fallout games for a long time, 
and Bethesda actually puts out a game with the same glaring issues, a multiplayer game. Do you need any more proof that they don't care? That they really don't? So often I was just walking around this game and I was just remarking how ugly it looked. Like it looks fucking ugly and I don't care about graphics that much. But I do care about laziness, and, and I guess I care about these graphics in the context of how bad this performance is, and how little has effort it seems has gone into this game. The other thing I'll say is that no effort has been made whatsoever to take the clearly console-specific controller scheme and do away with that and make it so that you can play this, this game fully on a keyboard and mouse. As you play this game, you will discover so many buttons are used needlessly because they have not taken the time to develop a proper PC UI. And that's perfectly exemplified during the build phase, right? When you put down a camp and you gotta build things, there's all this, this really cumbersome menu where I need to use the Z key and the C key to change something. I need to use the arrow keys up and down to change things. There's literally a keyboard and mouse that I'm holding in my fucking hand and I'm not allowed to use it. I need to like press these weird keys to scroll through options because they were too lazy to take the console controllers and, and provide me with something like they should have provided when I'm using a keyboard and mouse. I got they know that they got an IP that can print money and they're just gonna throw it out there. They know people will buy this regardless. They know microtransactions will still make them more money than a little bit. The game already has a litany of issues, texture problems, a world that seems bland and dead and empty. Even bigger YouTubers are finally coming out and complaining about how just, there's nothing here, there's no meat on the bone. In days, this is one of the worst betas I've ever played in my entire time playing video games. And it's from Bethesda, they're one of the biggest, most well-resourced companies in the world when it comes to video game development. They can do a hell of a lot better than this and they have absolutely not done this. And now there are no modders to save them because the mods don't come for at least another year. There's microtransactions, they're already in guys, but all this other stuff that I've talked about, that's not in yet. You know, like field of view slider, no, 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 no. Microtransactions, yes, field of view slider. You'll have to wait for that, do you know what I mean? I think it's really shitty. I think that anyone that has their pre-order available, I would strongly recommend canceling it. While editing this, TC had a friend who had the beta to Fallout 76, and they got me a video to the game's microtransactions, which admittedly I didn't pay that much attention to but they're actually kind of crappy. Like these are some crappy microtransactions. I'm being shown from everything from apparel to icons. Now, surprisingly, pajama pants runs you 600 atoms. A jumpsuit, 600 atoms. Black fisherman outfit, 600 atoms. Red khakis and a shirt, a, 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 a a Fallout 76 cap is $5? Really? Sun hat, $3. A blue skin for your pit boy is $4. So it's obvious you can earn atoms while playing Fallout 76, but I did the math myself while looking at this PC Gamer article. And frankly, it seems to translate to maybe you make 70 cents an hour playing Fallout 76. This is a maybe because this article talks about the first two hours of the game. Therefore, this is the beginning stages. They let you get your feet wet and they give you a little something as an incentive for playing. But let's be generous and say you can earn 70 atoms an hour which is 70 cents. That translates to 140 atoms an hour. You know what? I'm doing real money. I can't play this fucking game of reading off crap as specialized bullshit. 140 atoms, fuck you. It's a dollar and 40 cents. So for two hours, you make a dollar and 40 cents. Essentially, playing Fallout 76, you make less money than an Asian child working in an Apple phone factory. Uh-oh, he's... He's over the edge, he's angry. So two hours of gameplay, 140 atoms, means you can buy maybe a few stupid ass little icons for your character. You ain't moving in a moat. You're not, let me look at this. Cause I keep forgetting what the hell I'm staring at. Get over here or I'll choke the shit out of you, little picture. Get out of here, pup. Not you. You can't even buy an emote 
for two hours of gameplay. You have to play Fallout 76 for four hours to buy a $3 emote. You can buy waving for photo mode though for a hunt. No, no, you can't. I'm sorry. That's 150 cents. 150. That's a dollar 50. My bad. So even if you put four hours into the game, you still couldn't buy a skin for your little pit boy, but you could move a stupid tattoo that doesn't even look cool. Whatever. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Didn't P. Hines say that they give you a crap ton of atoms for playing the game? You play for four hours. You could barely move a, a, an emote. Yeah, of course, the microtransactions are in there. Also, PC Gamer, get better ads. I don't give a fuck about Ariana Grande. I don't even know who half of these rappers are. Call me racist if you want. I'm a minority. I don't know who the fuck this is. Why is this on my feed? When I'm looking for PC gaming news. Not a bad deal if I say so myself. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. This is, this is pathetic. Utterly pathetic and atrocious. When you think like the gaming industry can't get any lower, it does. And I thought Bethesda would have a bit more integrity than this. I thought they would at least launch a game that didn't have such glaring problems in the core gameplay. I knew there wasn't going to be any NPCs. I knew it was going to be a barren, empty wasteland. I knew they didn't even get PvP right. But you're telling me they left bugs and issues? from Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 that can be exploited. How the fuck did they miss this? How do you launch a game on PC knowing it's pretty much the same thing and don't say, hey, we gotta do something about the any file tweak. Like maybe the game will come out and they'll launch it with a lock frame rate in the game world or something like that. Who the hell knows? But frankly, I got nothing for this. This is pathetic. Almost as pathetic as Capcom trying to sell an $8,000 jacket. Actually, no. At least Capcom's honest with you there. They give you a price and you know you're getting a piece of shit. But that's just trying to pretend that this is a great game. And they also have their influencers being very kind to a game that has obvious defects and bugs that are truly already game broken and the game hasn't even launched yet. I'm sure someone will get mad at me. You know, downvote the video. Oh, fuck under. Yeah, right. Yeah, two weeks. Two weeks is going to get better. Mod should be out in a year at best, which will prove very interesting on how Bethesda will implement them and get paid for them. But microtransactions are already off the bat there. You know what you're getting in. And for everybody who is willing to pay for the beta, your progress carries over. So that's nice. You know, you get a leg up on all the other players who waited till reviewers did the game. So yeah, eh, that's not a shitty practice at all. <laughs> Screw this, man. I'm out of here. Very comment, subscribe, so choose to if not to help it. I can't actually want to give more of a shit to me in the age of apathy. But if you so choose to follow me, it is greatly appreciated. Because without all of you, I am nothing. That bad games journalism and the fact that the gaming industry is turning into a corpulent whore hell-bent on making as much money as possible while giving you as little experience as possible has created the entity that is me on YouTube.